Macca's Guides. <laughs> Hey, what's up guys? Maca here with another 100% full game walkthrough. And in this video, we are going to be going through the game called Sagebrush, recently released at the beginning of August 2019 by Radalek Games. The full 1000 gamer score is available in the time of this video, right around the 40 minute mark, maybe a little bit less if you're able to uh, follow along quite quickly. At the very beginning, you can go to options. I would recommend turning up the brightness pretty significantly. I'd also recommend turning down the look sensitivity uh, quite a bit. This is just my personal preference as I think the game uh, is very sensitive at the beginning. We're gonna apply that. If you are an inverted player, you will have to do that through the Xbox Accessories app, unfortunately, because it's 2019 and why would any game have the ability to switch your inverted axis? Now, from this little kind of cutscene, you can press uh, you can press start to kind of skip it, and you will spawn. This is a first-person game. Move with the left stick. Look with the right stick. We'll look to our right and see a car, and then we can go up to it and look in the back. Press A to interact with items, so we can open the trunk, and then we can look inside the trunk and pick up the wire cutters, which are added to our inventory. Press Y to look into your inventory, and then Y to back out. Additionally, you can hold the left trigger while moving in order to sprint, so try that a little bit, and walk towards the front of the car where the light is shining, interact with the fence, and then use your wire cutters to cut a hole in, which will allow us to go inside. I will be sprinting it during any parts where it's pretty obvious where I'm going, so there's a house right in front of me. I will sprint straight at it, and we will go inside, interacting with the door, pressing A. Now, as we enter, there is a map on the desk to our left. You can pick up the map, and then you can press X to open up the map. It doesn't actually show where you are in the map, but it gives you a rough idea of where you are in case you get lost. Now, the first door to the left next to that desk, open it up. You'll notice a bookshelf directly in front of you. Behind that bookshelf to the right of it, if you kind of get yourself in this nook, you can find two keys hanging up on the bookshelf. Make sure you pick up both of them, and then head out of this room and into the main kind of cafeteria area. There is a third key, so as you enter, hook to the left. There is a small box on the wall. Open the box, and then inside you can pick up the generator key. Then what we can do is head to the middle of the room, and you'll notice a tape on the desk or on one of the tables. Use the tape deck. This is the collectible oh, of um, our playthrough. There are a total of 12 of these. Each no, time you use one, you'll be transported into like a black and white world. So Listen to a little bit of dialogue. And the other thing you have to keep in mind is that it'll lock you kind of in the room you are currently in. So we're just going to stare at it and wait until it brings us back into the regular game. Getting all 12 of these is required in a playthrough in order to get your 1000 or your platinum trophy. Um, and uh, yeah, so we'll just kind of wait this one out. My parents would call and I would just lie about how things were going. I didn't know what I wanted because I guess... I didn't really want anything. I would wake up and just count the seconds ticking off of my life until I fell back asleep. We were all broken in some way, I think. Some more than others. So really quickly, I'm going to open up the map to give you an idea of where we're going. I am currently in the community hall. And in the direction of the farm, there is like a long house with a little generator room uh, near the bottom right hand corner. That's where we're going to head. So exit this community hall from the direction we went, or we came rather. Uh, as we open up the door and to our right, you'll notice a gate. So go up to the gate and you will be required to open it with a key. You will need to pick the right key. So the first key with the word gate on it opens up the gate. And then you can interact with it and open it up, unlocking our first achievement or trophy. As we exit, turn to the right-hand side and then kind of follow the fence. Take another right-hand turn and then we are going all the way over there where I'm aiming right now. This game has a pretty unique graphical style to say the least. It kind of blends the line between being artistic and just looking terrible. And uh, in terms of Radalika games, it's actually one of the better ones in my opinion. This is like my third or f third playthrough pretty much. Um, but then as we approach this uh, generator room, we will interact with the door and we will need to open it. And the key for this door is the farm shed door, which will allow us to go inside. As you enter, feel free to turn the light on directly uh, above you, ahead of you. 
pull the chain whenever the game decides you are looking at the exact there we go uh once we pull the chain look to your right hand side there's a jacket examine the jacket you will find a key next to the jacket there are some batteries pick up the batteries achievement unlocked or trophy and you can now press b to turn on your flashlight additionally there is a tape deck make sure you listen to it and you will be locked the in this room until it James, is finished playing. I was immediately filled with a sense of peace. It's hard to explain. I guess he just seemed so sure. He asked if I was a believer. I said I'd been raised Catholic, but it never clicked. There's a reason for that, he said. They've been lying to you, all of them. And I knew he was right. Once done with this tape deck, once done with this tape deck, you can now exit. I'll open up the map real quick. So we're near that bottom right hand corner and we're going all the way to the bottom left hand corner where there is a small trailer park. On the way, we are going to visit the baseball field. So exit the door and basically just run straight through the cornfield. The cornfield will eventually end. You'll notice that the community building on our left hand side. But once the corn ends, Take a peek to your right hand side and you'll notice that there is a small open area with some uh, baseball bases on the ground. What we want to do is find home base. This will be third base. So home base will be this way. You want to find home base, examine home plate and then stand on it and just run the bases in a counterclockwise way like you would in baseball. So home base, run over first base, run over second base then to third base and then back to home you don't have to interact with each base i think you just have to like walk over it and eventually the achievement will unlock so that right there is the community hut and there is the sun setting so to the right over there is where the trailer park is so we're gonna now sprint there This area is really not that hard uh, to navigate. It's pretty simple in my opinion. There's really not that many buildings to go to in the game. Uh, but we'll uh, enter the trailer park right here through the main gate. You can follow the road if you don't want to cut through all of the little fields. As we enter the trailer park, go to the right hand side. In the first little thing here, it's a bathroom and inside there's a toilet. Inside the toilet, there's a pregnancy test. Pick it up. Feel free to also turn on your flashlight right now if you desire. The pregnancy test unlocks an achievement or trophy. Now what we need to do is find Andrew's trailer. So exit the bathroom and it will be kind of near the main road right here. It'll be the first one touching the main road. You can inspect the little sign next to it. It'll say brother Andrew. Open the door and make sure you use the Andrew's trailer key. After you open the door, head inside. Look to the left hand side on the bed and you will find a key to Viola's trailer. Pick that up and then additionally there's some letters and backstory you can read but there's also a tape deck. Make sure you interact with it Life and wait for it to finish it. up. I think this one's on the longer end. prayer with Father James in the chapel, then meet for breakfast and then we'd set off to work for the day. Some of us worked the fields, others worked on expanding the compound. We had a school teacher, we had cooks. In the evening, we would study scripture or listen to one of Father's lectures. Then it would be time for penance, more prayer, and then sleep. I slept better those early nights than I had in years. I was home. Do you know how good it feels to find home after so long? I would have done anything for Father. He saved me. With this one done, you can now exit out the door and take a right-hand turn You'll notice a downed trailer, go past that trailer, and then there are two trailers, and the one on the right is Viola's trailer. Again, we can inspect the sign, Sister Viola, Juliet, and Lucas. Go inside using the Viola key. This one's a little bit weird. Sometimes it doesn't let you walk in, so just keep trying to walk in until it lets you in. Find the tape deck on the uh, kitchen counter and interact with it. We this will be our fourth out of 12 tape Lord. decks, which is an achievement or trophy. You know if you want to do a quick achievement check, we are at five out of 12 for 410. The feeling we all need in our lives. And on top of that, Father James took a special interest in me. He said he felt spiritually invigorated by my presence and often called me to the rectory to spend time with him. I'm not dumb, I knew but I didn't care. 
I was so honored to be his chosen. All right, so now we'll turn around and head out the door. Feel free to turn on your flashlight if you so desire. Hook around to the left and exit the tra trailer park. Uh, directly in front of you, you should notice a red building, which is the school. It is on your map if you so desire. We are going to just sprint all the way there and head inside through the front door, which should be open. Once we enter the school, all we want to do is go inside and find the fifth tape sitting on one of the desks. Make sure to listen to it all the way through, obviously, before you I try to exit, as you will not be able to leave children. until it's over and we the colors reading, come back to writing, your screen. Viola was one of the most faithful among us. As I was saying, feel free to leave your comments uh, about what you thought about Viola the game, the uh, but this game was actually kind of interesting. Had a cool story and, and a cool art style, even if it did kind of look bad on purpose. Um, you know, not a bad title overall, in my opinion. And the uh, Easy Gamer score, I guess, is also welcome. So once this is over, we're going to turn around and leave the school the door we from the door we came out of. As we exit, turn to the right-hand side and follow the school wall to find the red generator. Interact with the generator using your generator key, and then turn it on and it will be running. Continue in that same direction. You should see a building on your map called the Rectory. We'll enter into that area, and there is a padlock on the main gate, unfortunately. But we do know the code for that gate. So interact with the padlock and enter the code 0603. That's 0603 as shown on screen and submit it to open the gate. And we can now enter through the front door of this building. As we enter the front door, go to the right hand side and the first door to your right will be the bedroom. Go inside and then you can examine the trailer master key so make sure you pick that up and then you can also use the tape deck here you will unlock another uh, achievement or trophy for dusk falls on sage brush which is basically like as you per as you progress through the game it gets darker and darker and darker so it's now nighttime so when we exit this building you'll see it's nighttime uh, and then at the end of the game, the, the sun kind of rises again. But those are kind of just progressionary or progression-based achievements or trophies. So again, we're inside the bedroom here. We picked up the master key. We picked up the tape. And then after this tape is done, we can exit back out and head to the trailers. teach our children the true way of things. The Lord called upon many women to provide succor and relief. Now, those of you with husbands may be rightly confused. Is this not a sin? I ask you, do you not love the Lord more than your husband? Would you deny the Lord himself your love? I am his flag bearer. All right, so as I said, we're ready to go back to the trailers. Just exit out the door, out the front door, and then sprint all the way to the trailers. You should know this path pretty well. We're going to just head basically the exact way we came. We're just going to do that in reverse. So we're going to go by the school and then exit, uh, enter the trailers from the front gate. The trailer we're looking for is Leonard's trailer. The easiest way to find it is as you enter through this main gate where we entered all the times we've come here, take the left hand path and then head up the hill all the way to the last trailer. And it will be on your left hand side near the top. There will be a nameplate and the nameplate will let you know that it's brother Leonard. Open it using the master trailer key and then go inside. Here as you enter on the right hand side find the bolt cutters. And also you can find your seventh tape deck which we will want to obviously interact with in order to uh, you know allow it to play and for it to uh, count towards our total. Doctrines changed. Actions that would have been terrible sins previously were suddenly permissible, while seemingly innocent behaviors became mortal sins. The others seemed to have no problem going along with it. I wondered if something was wrong with me. Father grew visibly agitated, and as adamant as he was about the sanctity of his new revelations, something was different. He was scared, and that scared me.
So turn around and then leave this trailer and go down the hill two trailers. So we're going to pass this first one and then this other one. And just down the hill from where we were, we'll see a trailer with some chains on it. It'll be Brother Peyton's trailer. Examine the chains and use the bolt cutter to open up the trailer. And then inside you can pick up the shovel. Now what we want to do is go to the fire pit, which is kind of near the middle of the area. Make sure you have your flashlight on if you're having trouble navigating. We'll exit out through that main entrance by the two bathrooms that we've been using. And then we'll kind of head diagonally to the right towards this tree and then just go past it. You should end up near a fire pit with a large tree. So this is the fire pit kind of directly in front of us. And you'll notice that there's a tree near the back of this fire pit. Next to that tree is a pile of dirt. So we're going to interact with that dirt pile and use the shovel. Once we use the shovel, we'll actually get a small brass key inside. And then we can actually head back to the trailers that we just came from. So again, we went to the fire pit, we dug up a key, back to the trailers we go. We're going to enter from the normal entrance we've been using and then take a sharp right-hand turn. The trailer closest to the two bathrooms is the trailer we're looking for. So here are the two bathrooms and then right here is the trailer. This is Sister Lillian's trailer and you will have Sister Lillian's key dug up from the fire pit. We can now go inside and in this area, we can find a key hanging up on the back wall by the light switch called the cleansing room key. And additionally, we can also find our eighth tape deck. Doing so will unlock an achievement or a trophy and obviously just listen to it until somehow it finishes. Somehow that I was wavering. I'm still not sure how. He was from the FBI, he said, and he was here to investigate the group as a cult. When he said that word, I told him to go to hell. I almost went right to Father James, but I didn't. He left me a pamphlet that talked about the signs of a dangerous cult. At first, I refused to read it. What was the point? How could that have anything to do with our group? But I did read it, and even though my entire brain was screaming at me, I went back to him. From here, what we want to do is exit out the trailer. I'm going to quickly open up the map for you. We're going to the cleansing room, basically diagonally across from where we are. Um, so exit out the front gate and just head to the cleansing room. It basically looks like a barn. And again, it's diagonally across from the trailers. You'll see it right there in front of me. You're basically going to be running through the fire pit and through the baseball field to get there. Again, highly recommended you have your flashlight on if you don't. For some reason, when you open up your map and then you back out of the map, it'll sometimes turn your flashlight off, so keep that in mind as well. So on the way to the cleansing room, we will need to get inside using that cleansing room key we just grabbed from Lillian's trailer. There will be some spooky blood here, though. So open up the door using that cleansing room key. Open the door, enter, and on the right-hand side, as you enter, you'll see an altar. On that altar is the bloody axe. Pick it up. Turn around. There'll be a ladder behind you. Go and use the ladder, and you'll be teleported kind of up the ladder. As you get onto the landing at the top, turn to your right-hand side, and you'll see a small little podium with a key on it. This is the key to the mines, so pick it up. And there's a table right next to that as well with your, I believe, ninth tape deck. So interact with that and let it play out, and uh, we're we're past the halfway mark of the game for sure. So we're we're getting there. We're getting there. One by one, we would declare our sins to the flock. Each of us given penance for form in front of the others. Bloodletting, self-flagellation. I saw men break their own bones and women cut off a finger that had caused them to sin. It was true devotion, and it was terrifying and. Wonderful to see. All right, so after that tape deck, we can now continue uh, and go back down the ladder we came from and then exit out the door we came from to go back outside. Once you're outside, take a right hand turn and there will be a small little wooden structure, which is the entrance to the mines. We want to go inside of there. 
open the door using the new mines key we just grabbed. And then as we enter, you'll notice that there is uh, wooden beams that are kind of blocking us. Interact with them and use the axe to smash your way through them. Then enter into the elevator and use the controls to make our way to the bottom of the mines. Once you reach the bottom, look forward and just walk forward and take the first right hand turn. Then at the next little area, we want to take a left hand turn and then go to the end of this area. Once you reach the end here, the only thing we want to grab is the oil can on the shelf at the back. Now what we want to do is turn around, go in the direction we came from and just continue straight. Continue straight past the little turn, continue along the minecart rail and you'll see a minecart sitting at the end of the track. Uh, use your oil can on it and then you can move it. It will move back to reveal some wooden planks. We can interact with those and use our axe to go through them. Inside of here, we want to pick up the gas can in the back. We want to examine the body. Upon doing so, it will drop a note. We want to grab the note. This will unlock an achievement or trophy for progression. And next to that note, we can also find the tape deck, which we will want to use. Fault. This should be number 10 out of 12. And uh, after this one is done, we can uh, proceed kind of to the generator and then out of the mines. I don't know, but I can't shake the feeling that it's my fault. It doesn't matter. They found him. They told us he had decided to leave the flock. I didn't believe them, but I didn't ask any questions. After that, we moved on. It was like he had never been there at all. It scared me, but instead of trying to get away, I just let myself fall deeper in. I did my best to shut out any doubts. It was easier that way. All right, so head the direction we came from and follow the path. And at your first opportunity to turn left, make sure you do so. So we're turning left when we can, and then we're going to head straight across until we reach the end of this path. Just continue straight. And past these rocks, you'll notice a generator. Turn on the generator using your oil can. Once it's on, we can now turn around, take the right hand turn at the intersection, which will lead us back to the elevator, and we can now leave the mines. Make sure you activate the elevator once reaching the top. All right, so exit out this area and where we want to head to is we want to go to the farm shed, which is one of the first areas we went to in order to like examine a jacket, which gave us a key. We picked up the batteries for the flashlight and whatnot. So walk past the barn and then stick a little bit to the left uh, in the direction of the moon. You'll notice that there is the kind of long farmhouse. It might be a little bit hard to see on video. Uh, and next to that farmhouse is that small shed I was talking about. And we're using that more as a reference point than as our actual goal. So this is that little shed I was talking about and I'm facing it right now. What I wanna do is I wanna turn around and look the opposite way of it. And I'll notice that there is kind of corn directly in front of me. I want to go to that line of corn and then follow it to the left and you'll notice that there is a patch of dirt on the kind of corner of where that corn is not far from that shed. Examine that dirt and use your shovel to find a small brass key inside. Once you dig up the key we can now move to the rectory which is that house on the opposite corner of the uh, compound. So just start running your way towards there. You'll notice the chapel on the right hand side. You might want to take note of it as we will be going there next. So we're running past the baseball field just here on our right hand side. The fire pit's kind of directly in front of us. Uh, just head to the rectory though. You should know where that is by now.
Go through the front gate. It should be open from when we were here before. And then go through the front door. And after you go through the front door, head up the staircase. Turn to the left-hand side. You'll notice that there is a door which you'll want to open using the key that we found in the dirt. Open the door and go inside. Next to the bed, you'll find a safe. Uh, examine the lock pad and enter the code 3564. Again, that's 3564 and submit it. Inside, you can find a note that you can open if you want. But more importantly, we want to take the seal, which is the kind of little gold circle thing. And that will unlock an achievement or trophy. We are now ready to leave the rectory and go to the chapel, which was at the top of the hill. If you're uh, not familiar with where it was, feel free to open up your... Uh, you should actually see it right as you exit, but feel free to open up your map if you want to take a look at the map. So we'll exit out the door of the, of the rectory and basically take a left-hand turn, and we can head straight to the chapel through the hills. You can get caught up on the hills here if you go to an area that's too steep, but you should be able to kind of uh, get up the hill uh, right around here anyways. And then head up the small staircase that leads to the chapel. There will be a door, and on that door what you want to do is you want to interact with the, with the panel, and you want to put the seal into the door. You can now interact with the bottom of the door to open it, you can now head inside and you can read or uh, listen to your 11th tape deck. This is a mandatory part of the story and once we reach this section we are locked in this room and have to continue to the end of the game. So if you did miss anything from earlier in the video you'll have to do that on a new playthrough. But nonetheless this story segment is about two and a half minutes. I will let it play out and join you guys back with commentary to wrap up the game after it is over. They sent demons to test our resolve. They expected us to give up the fight, but here, today, we proved to all of them that we never gave up. Our faith never wavered. Today, we take our place at the foot of the throne of the Lord. Here now, we'll dull the bodies a little. There's no need for it to hurt. Here, drink this. Pass these around. Things will go a little fuzzy, but then the flames will take us, and we will join our Lord in his heaven. We will be by his side forever, where we belong. Amen. Amen. Boy, I love each and every one. when they locked the doors and then Andrew and Leonard started soaking rags and lighter fluid while I, I started handing out the cups. Little paper cups full of crushed up quaaludes mixed with lemonade. Father kept preaching as we drank. They lit the rags and put them around the outer walls. Everything caught so quickly as soon as everything was on fire and, and people just that sat down in it, let it take them. Something clicked, I, I don't know what. I needed to get out, I didn't want to die. I remembered Father's temple and I ran. All right, so after the tape deck, go through the door on the right-hand side. Inside, you'll find three journals. Pick all three of them up. One, two, three. Picking up all three journals will reveal a secret door behind this bookshelf. We can then go inside and go through this room and through these series of hallways. This is more or less the end of the game. Everything that happens in here is pretty linear, but in this room we'll find our last and twelfth tape deck. So make sure you pick that one up, and that should unlock your achievement or trophy for having all twelve. For some reason mine isn't showing up on screen, but uh, they're all in here. 
and then we can continue forward uh, through the rest of the game. There it goes, the achievement or trophy finally. There are some late pops in this game for me, uh, but back up and head through the door. So the rest of the game, like I was saying, is quite linear. What will happen is you'll basically get locked in a room and you won't be able to exit and you'll be forced to listen to a piece of story. So the first time that happens is in this next room coming up. The light will turn on, there will be some dialogue here, and you'll have to listen to all of the dialogue. Once it finishes up, the door on the other side will light up with uh, like a light under it, meaning that you're now able to go through it, but you won't be able to go through the door until all of the dialogue in the room finishes up. I think there's about four or five rooms similar to this, and I think they range from 30 seconds to about a minute or a minute and a half. And then eventually you will reach the kind of end of the corridors uh, and you'll have to kind of uh, turn around and then head back in the same direction you came from. You'll end up on a balcony and the game will end. Now the reason I'm explaining all of this now is because I won't be joining you in commentary for the rest of the game as you literally will just walk through a series of hallways and I don't think you need me to tell you how to do that. The video will obviously keep running and it'll show you how to do everything if for whatever reason uh, you know, you get stuck. But uh, in terms of my commentary, yeah. You're just going to walk from room to room, wait for all of the little story sections to happen, and eventually end up on a balcony. That will end the game, unlock your final achievement for a 1,000 out of a 1,000 or your platinum trophy, and you can listen to the end of the story if you so desire. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, if this video was helpful, please drop a like. I really appreciate it. It really helps uh, let people know that the video was useful if they do find it through a YouTube search. Additionally, I would really appreciate it if you shared it with a friend who might also be into Gamerscore or uh, Platinum Trophies or Trophy Hunting. And uh, if you really, really like this video and want to help support the channel in a more direct way, there's a link to my Patreon page in the YouTube description, patreon.com slash Mac91productions. Thank you guys so much for watching, and hopefully I see you next time. Peace! It seems as if you almost regret surviving the fire. I don't know, I, I don't. It's so confusing. I didn't want to die, but I feel like I let them all down. Let them down because you didn't save them, or because you didn't die with them. I don't know anymore. Well, listen to me. No matter what, you deserve to live. I promise you. Lillian, you deserve to live. I... I need to go. I, I can't do this right now. I, I can't. want to hear me ramble about mechanical engineering for another 20 minutes. Tell me more about you. You study communications, right? What kind of job does that get you? <laughs> well, right off the bat, not much. I, I couldn't find work, so I uh, ended up backpacking through Europe for a year after college. Oh, cool. I've always wanted to do something like that. I bet it was amazing. Yeah, it was super fulfilling to see all those different ways of life. Really eye-opening. God, that was a long time ago. Man, I'm jealous. I jumped right into work after school. Working 70, what, 80 hours? You know how it is. You just expect to devote everything to it. Like a, like a religion. It took me a while to see how messed up it was. Yeah, I can imagine. unheard message. First unheard message sent yesterday at 7.15 p.m. Lil, is, is everything all right? I've been trying to get a hold of you all day. P please pick up. I'm worried about you. 
Okay, just just call me back. Love you. End of message. To delete this message, press seven. <laughs> message deleted. I could move on, pretend it hadn't happened, but here it is, I'm looking at it. I was here. We were all here. And now it's just me. Ah, oh, Lil, Jesus, there you are. I've been trying to get a hold of you for hours. Where are you? I... I, I had to take care of something. Look, just, just... Are you okay? I was getting worried. Yeah, yeah, yes. I'm, I'm fine. Um, I'm heading home now. Tim? There's some things I need to tell you. I met Anne first, waiting for the bus. Normally, I avoid talking to just about anybody, but she struck up the conversation. She was so pleasant, so confident. She smiled at me as if she had known me as a kid, and we were just catching up after all these years. She told me she could tell I had a hole in my life. She knew what that was like, she said. She had also had a hole, but it was gone now. I asked her what she was selling, and she laughed and said nothing, nothing at all, that what she had to offer was free for anyone who wanted it bad enough. I asked her what had helped her. She just said, James. 